them. You always love to salute first responders when they do the right thing, which is all the time, most of the time. Thank you, guys. Doesn't smashing the one, two, three. Okay. I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to testify in support of support decision making and act relative to authorizing support decision making agreements for certain adults with disabilities. S109. My name is Jonathan Gardner. I live in East Bridgewater, Massachusetts. I'm a 20 year old decision maker, cancer survivor who happens to have autism. Oh, really? Uh, oh. oh, sorry. Uh, does that count on to my time? <laughs> Uh, okay. <laughs> I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to testify for, for in support of support decision making, an act relative to authorizing support decision making for certain adults with disabilities, S109. My name is Jonathan Garner. I live in East Red Water, Massachusetts. I am a 20 year old decision maker, cancer survivor who happens to have autism. I have different types of support and supporters that help me live my best life. I use something called support decision making or SDM. SDM is an alternative to the a person with me picks a group of people they trust to help with them make decisions. I'm the decision maker in my life. I use support decision making, my fight against cancer, and mental health in most areas of help my life. When I was 16, my mother and I were trying to drive us to that before we died. This didn't feel right for us. My mom had one of our SDM and we decided to find it. To me, SDM is a tool of choice that I have in my toolbox. I think school should pressure families to guardianship. There's um, there are lots of other options people can use. I started by choosing my supporters. I decided on different people who would help me with different uh, parts of my life. My first SDM plan only included my mom, dad, and brother. But as I grew older, my plan has evolved, and I've had many other supporters to my team, different areas of my life. And because SDM lets me keep my limits, I can change my own plan as my needs and life change over time. I am the one in control of my life, not a judge or guardian. In 2021, I was diagnosed with Ewing succumb, which is a rare form okay, of cancer. Yep, this was during the height of COVID-19 pandemic. I was already using SDM in my life, so it gave me some confidence to know I would have support for this new life journey. However, uh, uh, COVID 19 list of restrictions made using SDM part, we had to advocate with the hospital to have my support, at least with me at my appointments. A hospital should be required to respect SDM as a way of accommodating people with disabilities. It should be recognized as a right everywhere. Fighting cancer has been one of the hardest journeys of my life. I will, I will not be the person I am today without SDM. For example, when I was six months into chemotherapy and two weeks into radiation, I was home one day and my body and mind were feeling horrible and hopeless. I ended up in my bed and crying and just really wanted to get up. I told my mom, I don't care what happens to me. I just wanted to stop even if to my cause seemed to die. My mom had to take time to process all this herself, but when she came back, he came back and not as but as my support person. He said to me, Jonathan, I do not know what the answer to this all is, but if you put your faith in me as your support person, I'm going to find my hardest of hope to figure this out. From there, I gave my mom the okay to contact the medical team, and together they all came up with a different plan for me to think about. And after the meeting, I was able to talk to support and have up the plan and get my questions answered, and then I moved forward with it. The plan ultimately saved my life to go over the and get up at the same time, thanks to asking them. Asking them truly makes me feel involved in my life. It provides me with choices about when and how I was going to see my energy. Because asking was able to let my body and voice guide me, the help of my supporters. I did not have any choices when I came to have a cancer, but at least I was able to control the wrench of a doctor. Well, guardianship would have been worth the death to me. I would have lost my choice. I was not able to give my support to people during my cancer treatments. I would just be a shell of myself now if I even survived. I'm the type of person who needs to have full trust in the people that are in my life. If someone else picked those support about those people for me, I would not be able he fully and be able to be the person I am today. I need to make choices for my own life. If my body had fourth the humans, I would have been severely depressed, damaged, and not the person I am today. SDM offers many opportunities in my life. I firmly believe that SDM gives people a choice for freedom and a choice to choose the best of all the them. Everyone should have the right to choose the way they want to live their life so they can live yeah. their best lives. Thank you. I would like to thank you all for the opportunity to testify in support of supported decision making or SDM. My name is Nancy Gardner. I live in East Bridgewater. As you just heard from Jonathan, I am not just his mom, but I am privileged to be one of his support people. When Jonathan started cancer treatment, no one at the hospital seemed to know about SDM. I explained that I was not just a parent, I was a support person. Both my husband and I were support people, therefore Jonathan needed us both with him. 
to go for treatment. There was a lot of pushback at the beginning. Jonathan's medical team learned a lot from us, and along with their guidance, when Jonathan wanted to stop his treatment, I was able to support him by gathering and breaking down the information and choices he needed to continue treatment and save his life. As Jonathan's mom and support person, I can tell you that my greatest worry has always been what will happen when my husband and I are no longer here. SDM has created a sense of security and weight off our shoulders, just knowing that Jonathan's voice will be validated by people he has chosen to support him and care for him. His voices and choices matter. Because of SDM, Jonathan has evolved to be a more self-confident individual in his choices. He is self-advocating to a point that I could never have imagined. And I just want him to continue to guide us on this journey so he can live his best life. If SDM became a law, more people would be willing to try it. Families would not have to fight like we had to and explain what SDM is to so many healthcare providers. It will just be understood and accepted. Cancer was hard enough to deal with. Families should not have to fight to get the support they need for loved ones. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you so much. And, and Jonathan, I apologize on behalf of the state for the technical issues and having to restart. Thank you uh, for your patience with us. And I would ask if you could um, submit your testimony to us uh, written as well so we can have a record, make sure we catch every every piece of it. And I just want to clarify, which I, I think I heard, which uh, speaks to one of the importance of, of having uh, these agreements codified, is that a part of this would also give access uh, to information or access into, you know, I, I know you gave the example of having uh, your supporter in uh, the um, medical uh, appointment with you uh, during COVID so that this would kind of create that, that access to information as opposed to release of information with each every agency each time you're looking for it. Is that correct? Yes. And so like when we were at the hospital, especially the first time we went in, it was big hoopla um, of pushing, pushing that forward. But after we met with who we met with and, and how to get things, you know, kind of settled, the great thing was is that, um, I'll give a plug out to Mass General Hospital for <laughs> just letting us do all these things, um, that they flagged Jonathan's file. So every morning when we walked in at the height of COVID, they had our stickers ready to go, all the support people stickers, all the patient stickers, and we just went. It was also, again, it was a whole nother thing. You go into the chemo unit and, you know, only the patient was allowed, but we were able to push through those barriers. Um, and I feel like I am a strong advocate that had um, a lawyer on speed dial. I was privileged um, and the lawyer will be testifying. So, so I was um, privileged to have that. A lot of people are not, and I just feel like when your child has cancer or terminal illness or any anything, no parent needs to do that. We were scared ourselves, um, and it was just a wonderful thing to see the hospital take this into full support. Yeah, basically being able to take a leap of faith and trust that with all the stuff that went like HIPAA and all that stuff, and it was truly a, a, one of the most thankful things that I still am. Thank you. So it saved his life. It really did. Do you have any other questions? Well, thank you for sharing your personal story. Oh, uh, Representative Sorry. Yeah, has a thank question. you, Mr. Chairman. I know the virtual uh, in person kind of is gets gets difficult, but so first of all, Jonathan Nissi, thank you for your testimony and glad to see that um, you know you're here. Um, with us today. I guess um, for Nancy, if maybe you could briefly describe for you as a decision maker, what was the support that you received um, during, you know, during, you know, the whole ordeal to kind of equip you to be able to help with those decisions? And, you know, when you initially entered into the agreement with your family, you know, what was kind of the, I guess, the onboarding or the agreements that were made to kind of set the parameters, if that makes sense? really didn't make sense. So when we first decided to do supported decision making, um, we had gone to the school um, at a team meeting when Jonathan was 16 and I had asked for um, guardianship options, not knowing much of anything. Um, and we were told Jonathan is on medication and we were told that full guardianship was the way to go because what would we do if Jonathan didn't want to take his medicine anymore. And my response was, 
I don't know. Have you talked to Jonathan lately? Jonathan will tell you what is going on. What, I, what am I going to do? He's bigger than I am. I don't know. What am I going to do? And it just didn't seem right. Jonathan and I have a wonderful relationship, a trusting relationship. And I thought to myself, there's got to be more. So I investigated and you'll be hearing from one of the teachers that taught me all about supported decision making soon. And I went to a workshop and I was like, whoa. And then I brought my husband in for that workshop and he was like, whoa. And then we brought Jonathan in and he was like, let's do it. And his team, Jonathan has a lot of trust issues, was very, very small at first. Um, as Jonathan grew and evolved, his trust grew and evolved with other individuals. And he asked them to be supporters in different ways. He has someone that he goes to for finances, someone that he goes to for his mental health, someone that he goes to for um, friendship and he even has a wingman. So, um, you know, he these things have evolved. People have also stepped down from his supportive decision-making team that haven't been able to be as involved as they would have liked to. And that's okay. People have come and gone and, and as he moves forward, I'm sure that's going to continue. Um, but knowing that he can make those decisions on who he wants is, I can't even tell you the peace it brings to my husband and I's heart, because that is every night you lie down and that's what the thoughts are on your pillow. What's going to happen to my kids when we're not here? My other child is 23. He lives on his own already. He's very independent. You know, he can do what he needs to do. Jonathan needs a little bit of support and he knows what supports he needs and he knows how to get them and who to ask for them. And so this is just very important to get this bill passed for us because like he told you, it saved his life. If that moment when he said to me, I want to die, no one should ever, ever, ever hear that from their child, ever. And I didn't know what I was going to do, but I did know that his medical team had already knew we were practicing this. It was six months into a very, we were in the hospital five days out of the week. We were there every day. They knew us. Um, they used to call us the Jonathan and Mom for the Yep, mm -hmm. and they did. And they knew and they said, you know, we're not just Jonathan came on the emergency Zoom for two seconds and said, just tell my mother because I want no part of this. She'll break it down for me. And the the power that Glad he kind of gave me to take in that information. I wasn't going to be like, idea. okay, this is your only choice, Jonathan. You have to do it because he, he would not, we would not have such a lovely relationship still. If, well, no, go right ahead. Like, you see how we all like got a joke. He would kind of like have a decent little boy at least. But, <laughs> but that is the thing. I went through a, let's just, long story short, I have a lot of trust issues to a lot of stuff that happened during my childhood. Not due to her or anything like that, due to outside forces. No. Yeah, but not due to my this mother. relationship you see right here, this uh, like, uh, doop -a -doop. <laughs> but uh, it doesn't exist because, well, I wouldn't trust her anymore. Because if she like forced I mean, me in, really like strapped me in and forced the team on, then the radiation on top of that, that would have basically ruined any type of trust I wouldn't have. I cannot be another one made for more support decision making because I say it all the time, but it is true. Support decision making truly did save my life, not only for my mental health, but my physical health as well, while also being able to take care of here. And I can never be more grateful for support decision making. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And next, it 